98 FM. The sound of the city. 98 FM's Dublin Talks. Weekdays from 10 a.m. with Adrian Kennedy. On Saturday night, we posted a video on our Facebook page uh, of joyriders in Finglas turning a housing estate, Berryfield Estate, into a demolition derby racetrack uh, during the uh, send off for um, local man Shane Fowler. Um, the video has since gone viral and has gathered a very mixed reaction on uh, social media. Um, uh, the scenes in the video resemble those of, of, uh, of a video game, basically, as cars were smashed into parked vehicles and garden walls just metres away from where children were standing. Uh, the footage lasts more than three minutes and clearly shows one car being rear-ended by another and spinning out of control onto the footpath, narrowly missing a person walking by. Even after the near miss, the car speeds up uh, the road and performs a number of uh, other turns and skids before other cars join in. I have to say that if you haven't seen this video, have a look at it on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Adrian K and Jeremy D. Anyway, local people in Finglas have uh, reacted very angrily, saying that this does not represent my area. Why did the guards uh, not intervene? I'm joined on the line by uh, Dublin Northwest uh, Fine Gael TD, uh, Noel Rock. Noel, welcome to 98FM. Hi, Adrian. How are you? Noel, obviously you, like everybody, are shocked by what you uh, witnessed. Why was there uh, no apparent guard presence there? Yeah, I mean, Adrian, not alone am I shocked. I'm disgusted. Uh, these individuals who took part in this were thugs, plain and simple, uh, and they need to be held account to the full rigours of the law. Um, that video that you saw and that you posted on your page it goes for about three minutes in length, but the incident itself went on for upwards of 15 minutes. Uh, Barry failed the state. Good area, full of good, hard work and decent people. Not far from a guard station, though. Um, should have had a response well within 15 minutes. And I'm surprised and very, very disappointed that we didn't have a response uh, while this incident was taking place because clearly it was out of control. I mean, you, you mentioned there someone was almost hit by a car out of control mm -hmm. and there was what we'll call an innocent car or a parked car that had nothing to do with the incident on the side of the road that was hit at least once during the video. Yes. That person has to pay car insurance that's going to have a big impact on their lives. You know, there are a lot of repercussions here, and it's deeply unfair to the decent, hard work and honest people in this estate, in this area, and they have to put up with this kind of rubbish. Now, um, some reports suggest that uh, there were Garda units nearby, uh, but they'd been attacked earlier in the day, and that it just wasn't uh, safe for them to approach uh, this gang of uh, joyriders. Have you heard anything like that? Yeah, I mean, generally speaking, the only time uh, uh, you know, a guard unit won't be available to deal with something like this is in the event that they're tied up elsewhere or in the event that there's a danger to life incident, I think they call it. Um, so that would seem to me to be the reason why they weren't on the scene so quickly. But nevertheless, it's disappointing that the resources are so thinly stretched that we can't manage to have them, uh, you know, a whole station in more than one place at once. Um, you know, it stands to reason that over the course of 15 minutes, the station has had a five minute drive from the estate, that we should be able to get somebody out there or even divert someone from Blanchardstown unit out there. That's what I was about to say. I mean, I, w I would have thought that at that moment on Saturday, that was probably the most pressing uh, incident going on at that very moment that should Absolutely. have had a, gar a guard of response. Absolutely. And, you know, we see these kind of incidences of antisocial behaviour, you know, right across Dublin every now and then. And they're always hugely regrettable when they happen. And I think this one has caught the public attention and the public imagination in a big way. I, I don't know if it was your video, but I saw a video of it on Facebook. Had about two million views already. You know, this ha has done a lot to damage uh, the reputation of a very decent area, uh, full of good, honest, hard-working people. Uh, and I think everybody, you know, if you look at the comments on your video, the people from the area are the ones most annoyed about it. Um, you know, because they work hard, do their best, uh, and then you have people like this completely undermining and ruining the reputation of an area. And I, I can imagine if you live in that area, to you know, an incident like this going viral, going global um, from your particular area has to uh, really upset uh, local people. Yeah, naturally enough. And they're the people who are, I think, most upset, um, most let down by this. Um, so, you know, what needs to happen now is we need to make sure that these people are held account by the law. Uh, we need to identify everybody involved in the video, I think. Uh, I don't think there'll be any particular difficulty in doing that, to be honest with you, as long as people, you know, speak to the Gardaí and are honest about it. 
Uh, but also, you know, there's a job to be done here as well. And I heard in your ads, you know, 98 FM always celebrates the, uh, the best of Dublin. And we're here talking about probably the worst of Dublin and the worst kinds of individuals in Dublin. Uh, but I think it's worth highlighting that, you know, in your best of Dublin awards, there are several several businesses based in Thinglas uh, and several individuals based in Thinglas that are nominated mm. and that are doing a great job and that are doing their best. Uh, so I think, you know, given, given your station are the ones running those awards, it's perhaps uh, maybe timely and appropriate to, to highlight that as well. You know, this is a good area and it's full of good people. All right, uh, Deputy Noel Rock, thanks very much indeed for joining us on 98FM. Thanks for being Paul, you're on Dublin's 98FM. How are you, Paul? Morning, Adrian. How are you? Good morning, Paul. Um, Paul, you witnessed uh, this incident on uh, on Saturday. It was Friday night. Oh, sorry, Friday night, was it? Oh, my apologies. Yeah. Um, Paul, uh, this looked like uh, the worst incident of joyriding I've seen in a long, long time. It was like a scene out of that PlayStation game, Grand Theft Auto. It was ridiculous. There was just, they just seemed to have a lot of themselves. They didn't care about anybody around them driving around like lunatics mm. crashing into each other. It was like a game plan. I mean the guards arrived in the scene. Every one of the young lads that was there put a smile at their faces and they were running around after the guards. It, it was How long it was did it, it, How long did it take for the guards to show up? I couldn't tell you because I arrived at as a rally in so I don't know how long I'd been going on before I arrived. Yeah. But, but I know like within two or three minutes of me seeing that the police were there in vast numbers, the fire brigade were there as well putting out one car. And then they decided to light the black car on fire. So the young fellas that were driving the car, when the guards did arrive, they just, what, taunted them? Yeah. And then ran off? Yeah, they, and then the, the, the guards from the had a house over across the road from Berryfield. And there was must have 20 or 30 young lads in the yard, and all taunting the guards. And was, did you see if anyone was arrested? I don't think there was anyone. The, the, the Sorry? The Sorry, say that again? I didn't see anybody getting arrested now. I don't think there was. Now, uh, okay, like I said, it's one of the worst vi- joyriding videos I've ever seen um, because, uh, I mean, I've seen ones, uh, you know, in, in industrial estates and stuff like that. Yeah, but th- yeah. this was in a housing estate uh, with young kids uh, looking on, uh, the cars ploughing into uh, parked cars that had nothing to do with the, with the, the incident. Cars hit. With the incident at all. I, I mean, like but I said, I... I, I, I well, the time I was there, I seen two parked cars along the residents getting crashed into. Yeah. Um, and that's something similar that happened on that same road a couple of years ago around Paddy's Day. I don't know if you remember the incident. Uh, I do, yeah. That was uh, that was down... Um, where was that? I can't remember exactly where it, it was. It was in the same location. Oh, it was in the same location. It was in Berryfield yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah, no, I do remember that as well, yeah. And every time you drive by that, that part of Finglas, there's, there's guns of lads standing around the bus stop. Can you understand why people... Are you from Finglas yourself, Paul? I am, yeah. And can you understand why an awful lot of people have been hitting out over the last uh, day or two uh, saying that it, this gives a, fa- a, a false impression of um, Finglas, that Finglas isn't like of that? Of course, yeah. There's, there's, good, there's good and bad in every area. It's just, unfortunately, there's about 20 school mics down there taking a load of Finglas down with them. But that's not Finglas. Finglas is a hard working class area with very good people in the area. It's just, the minority of scum that just want to destroy the place. And it, it, I, I can understand how uh, people might be upset at, um, at uh, you know, at incidents like that and people having, a, it kind of reinforces the negative image that people have of the area. Of course, yeah. It's, it's, it's terrible. Like, there's, there's honest, hard-working people that live in Berryfield with the cars are crashed into. They work hard. One of the friends, they have bills, they everything. And then for some scum like the crash into the car, the drunk the car and sort of put the road now next year. Mm. Terrible. Right. Um, I, I live in Finglas, says this message. And every single time I drive past that area, I lock my car doors. Um, Dave, you're on 98 FM. How are you, Dave? How are you, Adrian? All right. Dave, you're uh, putting some of the blame on this on the Guardian in Finglas. Well, I just think from, from living in the area myself, I think their whole attitude is very lacklustre. I think they don't they generally give a shit about the area. Um, I can tell you from my own experience, my own father's house got broken into there over Christmas. He wasn't there, he was staying up with my brother. And uh, I came down and I was waiting five hours for the patrol car to come. And he just kept saying, sorry, we, 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 we are in the list, but we just haven't got anyone available. I had to leave at one in the morning. 
I told him my brother would come down the next morning and he'd wait. he was waiting around six hours on Saturday morning like, for the patrol car, you know. And then uh, the, the Thursday, nearly six days later, the forensic guy comes. And, like, what, like, what good is that like, you know what I mean? Mm. Like, like the, the, the attitude, and even when you go into the station, if you're just getting passwords, photos, stamps, something like that, you could be waiting a half an hour before somebody even comes out. There just seems to be an attitude problem. Like, they're, they're is quick- it, well, is it that they're, they're under-resourced? Ah, yeah, but come here, you, like, in, in that situation there, you had, like, someone could have been killed there, like, do you know what I mean? They should have been straight in, doing what they had to do, and get that stopped quick as possible. Somebody could have, there was a gang of lads down the end that could have been ran over, like, do you know what I mean? Like, when I, when, when, years ago, where I grew up, the same thing happened, there was a gang of kids at Halloween up on a field, and a fella came down, tried to do a handbrake turn, and the, the, I don't know what, the handbrake cable snapped, or he went right through the crowd, and my little brother at the time was only seven, he went under the car, I think the man hit about ten, twelve people. And the people who sorted that out was the, the, the parents of that area. Do you know what I mean? The guard were against the usual fucking 10, sorry, of course, and 10 minutes late. To, you know, this car was going around for a half an hour before any sign of guardian came. But at that stage, the damage was done. Your man mm. had crashed through a crowd of people. And when I seen that video initially, I knew straight away the area was. I, I, I just, that, I got flashbacks of that. Like, but I just think the guardian up there, they, they, they just, there's a lackluster attitude about them. I just think he... See, this area is a cape. They're just, they are under resource, so you understand that, Paul. Okay, I mean, others will argue, and in fact, I heard this earlier on, I don't know how true it is, that the Guardi didn't um, get involved directly because they'd uh, been attacked earlier in the day uh, and that it was too dangerous for them to, uh, to go in there. Come here, like, I'm sure they have, like, it's, it, Dublin's a big, you can bring in other Guardi from other areas, you have to sort that situation out. That was a complete and utter... You know, there could have been people killed there, do you know what I mean? There's people's parked car on the side of the road getting smashed to pieces. I mean, we're living in a big city here, like, you know, you can, you, this can be all sorted out very quickly, do you know what I mean? If they really done their job right. They're quick enough to stop people in that area if you attack us out by a month and pull you out of the car, you know what I mean? When it comes to the nitty gritty stuff, I think they, they just lack a bit of backbone for basic stuff. Okay, so they're not, they're not ballsy enough in dealing with, with uh, crap like this? No, well, well, I mean, if you look at if you were in London or you were in any other major city in Europe and something like that happened, you'd have riot police in starting that out in seconds, you know mm. what I mean? Like, mm. that's, that's my opinion. I just think the guard in that area are a little bit lacklustre and they need to grow a set of balls, basically, you know what I mean? Do their job right, like, you know? All right, I'd love to know if anybody else agrees with that. Stay there for a second, Dave. Six seven nine seven ninety eight one is our telephone number. You can text or WhatsApp the program. Oh eight seven seven ninety eight ninety eight ninety eight. Basically, what a lot of people are saying is this joyriding incident appears to have gone on for at least fifteen minutes. The guardy eventually turned up. Um, uh, this was on Friday evening. Sorry, our apologies. I, I was away at the weekend. I thought it was Saturday. Um, the uh, Gardaí were too slow to react. That they should have been there within seconds. <clears throat> is that fair to blame the Gardaí? 6797981 is our uh, telephone number. Um, Frank, you're on 98FM. How are you, Frank? Morning, Adrian. How are you? Good morning, Frank. How are you? Um, we discussed this. Uh, with, uh, do you remember me telling you there about three years ago? We were on the phone with Maliki, and you were on the bell arm and the guards. Yes. And I told you that there's a severe breakdown of Lord Order in this country. And yeah. I'd say as all roses are always into heaven and said, don't be so foolish. This shows you what's going on in a daily basis around Dublin. Now, the guards come out, as you said there. Someone said that the guards said we were attacked earlier on. Does that not tell you that they can't please then? That they've lost control of the situation? It would say that. Um, yes, it yes, would say yes, that. Yes. It would say that there's a um, big problem. That uh, Yes, yes, yes. And let me explain something to Adrian. If this was any other city in Europe, even the States, by the way, you'd have a press conference. You'd have senior police officers out explaining what went on. Okay? Over here, we're not entitled to that. You get, we don't comment on individual cases. By the way, Adrian, your show there at 98, well, not your show, 98 FM, is it just an RTE television and radio thing that you can get interviews with senior guards or police commissioners or stuff like this? It's very rare. Um, yeah, it's it's yeah, very rare yeah. that they will put forward somebody to speak, yeah. Because they'll tell you we don't comment. They need to start commenting. We pay them the taxpayer. Mm. And people need to cop on with this. Now, that chap, Dave, there is 110% right what he says. Those guards and fingless there, Adrian, most days through the week, outside schools, 
stopping young mothers in cars that their tax is a week or two out of date and they're giving them tickets and taking cars off them. He's right there. I've seen it. Now, Friday, I drove through Fingers there Friday afternoon. I was aware of a funeral going on. And there was plenty of armed response units floating about the place Friday. Hmm. Yeah, so we, yeah, um, a, a lot crazy. of the blame, a lot yeah. of the blame um, is you believe on the guards. In fact, I've just gotten a message here. Um, I rang the guards before, and they uh, about a different joyriding incident, and they told me uh, let them do what they want once they're not hurting anyone. Just stay in your house. <laughs> yeah, Adrian, famous and other areas. I drive around the city. You have little scrouts on motorbikes, yeah. Flying about the place. Mm. The guards don't even chase them. Now, this is a fact, Adrian. Look, we're, we're going around and roundabouts with this. It's happening. But yet, if I went down on a motorbike with no, say, high vis or no helmet, I'll be pulled in like a light. Yeah, you will, yeah. No, it's getting ridiculous. Now, I mean. And isn't it. You, you obviously believe it's a case that the, the guardy are just aren't ballsy enough to get in there and sort it out properly. I don't know whether it's ballsy, Adrian. They've lost control of the city. They've lost control of this city. I don't know whether it's coming from the top, but they've lost control. That chap Dave said there that he's seen a gang of up to 15, 20 lads standing in the garden. If you had had a van coming down with 10 or 12 guards getting out, all kitted out there and just go in there and bait seven shades out of them. And damn the consequences. See, they, can't, they can't do that. And if they start but you doing think that. That's what's wrong, Adrian. Yeah, but well, I think that's what's wrong with society. Uh, yeah, I think that's what's wrong with society that if the yeah. guards did yeah. do that, uh, there would be murder. You know the. Oh, I'd love to know from people in the area there was there any hall doors kicked in there this morning and people dragged out of their bed? Wouldn't say so. Wouldn't say so. All right, see. If I there. didn't appear in court, though, Adrian, sorry. If I didn't appear in court now for paying a speeding fine, my hall door would be kicked in and I'd be dragged out of bed. Well, stay there for one second. Um, a lot of people putting the blame for an incident like this on the Gardaí for not being heavy-handed enough, for not get, having the balls to go in and sort it out. It took uh, quite a while for the Gardaí to uh, show up at the scene. Keith, you're from a different part of uh, Finglas, but you believe you put a lot of the blame for an incident like this on uh, the local people themselves. How you doing, Adrian? No, I wouldn't say I put the blame on the local people, but I do, I do feel there's a responsibility from the people in that area to come forward and name these people like surely they know who these are mm. there's no there's no way they don't know who they are they're from the area they're recording on their phones it's like how much are you willing to uh, accept in your own community like you know there's, gonna, there's gonna, always going to be a response time issue with the guards in that area I know that myself there is an attitude problem there where they've seen, they've seen this going on for years and they will be reluctant to go down in a hurry but let's not kill ourselves this area as well very failed buses that used to be afraid to drive drive down these areas because they're getting bricked out of it mm. or nothing, you know, just buses used to just take an alternative route to avoid the area. So it's not an isolated incident either. This has gone back 20, 30 years in this area. So there is a community thing there. <coughs> You're saying that yeah. it, 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 it's up to local people to tell the guardy who who were behind the wheels of those cars and whatever. I know, I can tell you... Well, Sorry about that. Jesus, it sounds like more, more joy right now. <laughs> um, I can tell you from the calls that we've gotten that local people are terrified. They don't want to. Uh, they're, they're, they're not in a million years are they going to um, contact can, the Gardaí because, because yeah. they'll be targeted themselves then. I, I can definitely understand that, but then you can't complain that these fellas are out joyriding in the street. It, it, let's just say they hit one of your kids or something. And you've been standing and by, and by, the, sorry, by the way, there was somebody nearly hit in in uh, yeah. if, if you look at, at the start of the video uh, that we have on our Facebook page, there's somebody nearly pinned uh, missed by centimeters uh, being pinned mm. up against the wall. Um, yeah. which is unbelievable. But sorry, um, you're saying that don't complain then if you're not prepared to uh, ring the guards. Exactly, you do. You have to. We are responsible. We, we build our own communities on what we do and what we accept in those communities is what will be acceptable. And if you're not, like, if someone's kid, if, your, if, if I lived down there and my child was hit and I hadn't come forward and, and named and shamed these people, or perhaps done something better myself, then I, I'd struggle with living with that rather than not ringing somebody or ringing the guards and stuff, you know? But again, like I said, uh, uh, local people are terrified to um, even speak on the radio, let, let alone ring the guards, um, because they fear being targeted by these scumbags. Well, I'll give you an example. The area where I'm from, now just going back 20 years ago, these, 
the, the crowd from Fingler South, the Filthy 50 they were called, I remember they came into our area years ago and one of them just, whether it was a Rob car or our own car, they came in and they just pulled the handbrake and they didn't, didn't harm anybody. But so I remember two, two old lads came out of their houses and while the car was stopped, they just pulled some man out of the car. Now they didn't harm him, but they sent him on his way and there was no more joyriding of the, of the sort for, for years, for as long as I lived there, you know. So if they see that as an example, like if a, lo- a couple of locals came out, could have, I know they're putting themselves at risk by getting in the way of rob cars and stuff like that. But there are ways to stop it without being a vigilante. But you can, you can cut this stuff out without relying on the guards every time, and it, it sets a precedent then for the next wave of sixteen, seventeen year olds coming up in the area that this isn't acceptable. Okay, so you put a lot of the blame uh, on on local people for accepting it or for not doing enough about it, for not dealing with it uh, by contacting the guards, by giving names to the guards and yeah. everything else. I don't say blame because they are, like I know many people in the area and they are hard-working people that just don't want to get involved. But then there is a responsibility side to what we accept in our communities. I have to say, there's a, there's a part of me, you know, when we, the likes of posting that video on our uh, Facebook page, we post it because it's so shocking, but there's a part of me that actually hates posting a video like that because it gives yeah. those tow rags uh, a, a feeling yeah, of glory. Absolutely. absolutely, it does, yeah, yeah. And I, I, I'm not even sure, I, I'd love to know the facts of it, whether the response time was quick enough. How long was the response time? At least 15 Again. minutes, by what I, from what I gather. Yeah, I mean, the guard station isn't really that far from... From that area. No, it's not. There, no, there, there, no, is, it's a, not. there is an issue. There is definitely an issue there with, with the attitudes of the Gardaí. Well, let me, let yeah. me read this message and see what you think of this. Uh, the Gardaí are right not to put themselves in danger by uh, intervening when at the end of the day, uh, the Gurriers get off with a slap on the wrist when their legal aid solicitors play the hard life and troubled upbringing card, uh, says Alan. Uh, mm-hmm. But he also says, also the residents of the area know who they are and they should hand the names to the Gardaí. And that is where the problem is, uh, that people won't yeah. do that. People don't do that. There is a mix there, like the Gardaí are paid to do a job and they're there to protect people as well and, and but then there is this, the community side to it where they need to be walking in tandem with each other but the Gar- I can not say understand but the Gardaí not rushing down to the area when it's going on for 20, 30 years and mm. their cars are getting pelted over and buses are afraid to drive into it I can kind of, so they, are, they are only you and I can kind of understand why they're not rushing down but well, God forbid someone was killed and they would have wished they, ran, they rushed down as well so all right, thanks for your call, Keith. Let me read a few, uh, some more of your messages. I live in uh, Finglas nearby in Talca Valley Park and every day on the park with kids walking and playing around, there is a speed race with motorbikes. We don't feel safe even to go to the park. Sometimes there are speed races with cars as well, but every day I see the motorbikes uh, in the park. And then another message says, um, this came to us by email, Guardy, don't give a damn. Uh, same in Darndale, the footage on Christmas Day for for instance, sees the scumbags ramming a single guard a car. Uh, where was uh, the guard a backup? Um, explains not enough resources or simply don't give a damn. Uh, it's terrible on the uh, good working class in that area. Um, Martin, you're on 98 FM. How are you, Martin? Good man, Adrian. Uh, Martin, what do you want to say? Now, I blame the parents here now, Adrian, because at the end of the day, right... They're sending their brats out, not knowing what they're doing, running them up in the estates in that ch- chip, thingless, and, and letting them do what they want to do. And then they want other people to come in and stop it. Well, if any of the residents had any balls, they would have walked out there yesterday. Do you know what I mean? Well, walk out in front of speeding cars. If that carry-on went on in my estate, I guarantee you one thing, it wouldn't be one resident out, it would be two or three of us out, let me tell you. But you, you can't realistically expect people to stand out on a, uh, no, on a street in front of those I cars. I tell you, Adrian, a rob car came down my road one night doing about 90 miles an hour. I stood in the middle of the road, I had a concrete block in my hand, your man knew what I was going to do, so we stopped the car. He got out of the car and ran. I've never seen a rob car in, since. Do you know what I mean? Okay, but hang you on. Can't, hang you can't expect the Gardaí to come in because these animals are let out in the street do what they want. <laughs> you, it, hang on. You said you, you were about to throw a concrete block at the car. I um, was. Your mum was doing about 90. 
Now, do you really expect people to put their own lives in danger um, or risk going to prison for killing somebody? Well, I wouldn't mind Adrian because it stopped to have to carry on and there are cars coming in there or in the estate, you know what I mean? I wouldn't mind going to Mount Joy and I'd go in and tell any guy that now at the minute. I'd, I'd rather go up to Mount Joy than some scumbag kill me next door neighbour or something, do you know what I mean? Like... Martin, do me a favour, stay there for one second. 67979081 is our telephone number. Um, where am I going now? Um, Stephanie, you're on 98FM. How are you, Stephanie? Hi, how are you? Stephanie, you're also from uh, Finglas and you're disgusted, am, yeah. you're disgusted with how, how an incident like this portrays your area. Yeah, no, I know, yeah, I am, but like, as I, as, as I said on my messages, you know, you can't help on inside your own home. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I mean, it's going to be everywhere. And do you know what? Is, that's going to happen. Do you know what I mean? But I was born and reared in Fingus. Do you know what I mean? And I never had any problems growing up. Now, I grew up in the east of Fingus and I live up the west now. Do you know what I mean? But I have a little young flat and he's maybe, he's not even five and he's growing up. But do you know what annoyed me more? The comments that people were writing that it was the parents' fault. Like, um, other comments like, it doesn't they get for having no dar around them. And not every child. Growing up, I mean, that doesn't mean your child's any different from any other child growing up seeing this. That's what annoyed me about the comments on it, like. Yeah, I, I, well, I mean, some people do believe that. Yeah, but as I said, like, you know, a single mother can only do their best when they're grown. They're, I mean, if you're kids anywhere, it's never... Do you know what I mean? Mm. But that's what the, the selfish comments of people, oh, you wouldn't see that in Dorky, or you wouldn't see that in Sutton, just say. Like, but, like, things can happen anywhere. Do you know what I mean? I just find it very discriminating because what happened up here now, we're okay, yeah, 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 I, mean, I have to say, uh, it, there are places, Stephanie, that, yeah. it, that incidents like this don't happen. Yes. Yeah. They don't happen. don't happen, happen yes. Yeah. Exactly. But I mean, I know, I mean for, for you to say that story. it happens everywhere uh, is yeah. just not true because it doesn't happen everywhere. No, it, it doesn't happen everywhere, but the minute it does happen in an area like this, it's just... You know, for some it's bad. I know it's not obviously the best of a place, or but to me, it's not the worst of a place either. Do you know what I mean? There is families and live their lives, and they've no choice. Do you know what I mean? They can't move out of the area, and there is kids sadly that have to go to school around here, and they they will see stuff like that happening growing up. But like, there's nothing no one can do. Do you know what I mean? And as you said, the guard they don't do anything about. There's nothing. Do you know any, what I mean? There's nothing to, anybody can do about it. Well, so, I don't know because well, not, I, mean, I don't I mean, live down that way. I have to say, when I saw a young kid in that video um, yeah. uh, looking on, the young kid is seven or eight or yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah, I've seen that, yeah. I, I, I just despair uh, for, now, for personally, that. personally, I didn't like that, now I have to say. Now, I, I don't agree with that. Now, the child could have been killed, do you know what mm. I mean? It's no, but my sorry, like, I, I, obviously outside your garden. That's my point. For a child yeah. at that age to be witnessing crap like this, I just despair for uh, what chance that child has in life. Do you know what I mean? That they're, yeah, they're it is, and sadly, it's very, it's, it's horrible. Like, do you know what I mean? Because the kids growing up around here do see that every day. I mean, I had my uncle down the park yesterday, and there is bikes rallying up and down. I mean, your nerves will be gone because you're, you're just seeing them flying up around these hills and you have your child I'm like what's this smacking to your child like obviously it's not going to be a joke when your, if your child's dead you know all right, stay there for a second, Stephanie. Uh, now, Deborah, you rang the Gardaí about a previous incident. Was it an incident of joyriding? Yes, uh, Adrian, it was an incident of a few cars joyriding around Finglas. Mm -hmm. um, we used to have an open green area in our estate and we rang the guards before to say the cars are flying in. They were actually going in and burning out a car on top of their green and the guard says, once they're on the field, in which the field is open, it was open, and there was kids flying down the road, playing in it, and the guards told us, go in and close your door, keep the kids in, and they'd only be hurting themselves, so you stay in. That's what we were told by Fingless Guard. On a number of times, we rang Fingless Guard and told them, and they've told us, just stay indoors, there's nothing we can do. Once They're only going to hurt themselves once there's no one else there. And they didn't bother their arse, they just told you to stay indoors? They told, stay in, close your door, stay in, and they won't, they won't hurt you, just let them hurt themselves if that's the case. My God. That, that's what we were told, and only for the residents themselves done something about it. We got fencing for all up around their green, you don't see much going on, but they're using now the main roads to go into the old dump area, which cars are being rammed off the road. Hmm. And the guards are not, if, if, if the, the kids that's doing this joyriding, once they hear the siren, bang, they're going to run out of the way. They're going to jump out of the car and leave it. They don't want to be caught by the guards. So the guards didn't even have to go into Berryfield. They could have just let the sirens on and stayed on the 
just before you go to the actual berry field. And the, the kids would have stopped. They all would have ran. Everybody would have ran. The, the people that's in these cars is only doing it for attention and everything else. And they're getting the attention of all the young kids, video record it and everything else. It's not on. All the guards have to do is show their presence in the area, put on the sirens, and that'll stop the cars outright. And why do you think they didn't or don't? I don't know why, as someone else said there a while ago on your radio station, the guards don't give a damn because they're not the ones getting hurt. They actually, we ran guards on a number of occasions and they, they come up the next day. They don't even bother coming up. And yeah, I know they're under source and we all understand that. But they're not dying to enjoy day with that little kid or anything. That could have been any of their kids walking out, walking out there and that car. That could have been my car outside my house. My car is my livelihood. And there you go, my car could have been rammed off the road. How long does it take for insurance bureaus? Five years, maybe? I don't know. Mm. If the guards drive down, put on their sirens, and just block off the road, not e- the, the roads leading into the road in Bayfield was going on, well, then they'll jump out of the car and stop. Uh, um, other people believe that uh, one of the reasons that the guardy wouldn't t- uh, go into the estate or don't go into the estate is the fear that these guys want to chase. They want to be chased by the guards, and the guards aren't going to give them that. No, and, and I, I don't blame the guards, because at the end of the day, you put your own safety force. But if the guards, as I said, put on their sirens, everybody's going to run. The cars aren't going to fly. Them cars were in no fit state to go out on them roads. So one of the wheels was hanging off the car. Sparks were flying everywhere over it. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, it was unbelievable. All the guards had to do was pram their sirens at the entrance into Berryfield, and then they would have stopped. I'm telling you, they, 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 these, these young lads don't want to be caught by guards. They don't want to be in trouble, but they just want the adrenaline of of all this going on around them. And once the guards show their presence, they'll stop. All right, stay there for one second. 6797981 is our telephone number. Text or WhatsApp us 0877989898. Jacintha, you're on 98FM. Hi, Jacintha. Hi, Adrian. Now, it's, Hi, yeah. you're also from Finglas. I am, I am. My friend was ran out of there last year. She was actually talking to you on the radio there last year. They oh. won't run over. This is the girl... Who, who lived up Kappa direction, was it? Sorry? It was this girl who lived up Kappa direction. Um, she's actually where the car was going. Oh, she was in Berryfield? She was, yeah. Oh, yeah, right, she okay. Actually, yeah, where the car was actually driving down. That was whole gate right there. That's my old house. That's our old house. Oh, right, okay. So, yeah, she was run out of the area. By who? That, by everybody around the area. Why? She's, well, they just wanted her out. For what we're we're she's five, she has five kids. Now, she's still walking the streets now today. And uh, She's uh, still homeless. Why was she run out of the area? I don't know. No, tell you the truth, Adrian. I'm just a friend. She's there I with you. Know. She's there with you. Put her on the phone to me. She's beside me, yeah. Yeah, yeah on, put her on. She's walking the streets. Hold on. Hello? How are you? Remind me, of, remind me of your name. Sorry, um... I don't really want to go into my details again because because last time I was on this I got an awful lot of abuse and an awful lot of people saying things that weren't true. And I'm uh, but you I'm just saying, look, it's not the people in that estate. You can't blame Singlis as a whole and you can't blame that estate as a whole because it's only a small minority of people that are causing these problems for everyone that's living in there. But why and were you the, uh, I, why were you run out of the area with five kids? Why? But that was got to do with my ex partner. I don't want that brought up. I don't want to talk because that was all my ex partner. The last time this was on the radio, my I got an awful time over it. I'm just telling you the problem that lies with Berryfield is the guards. The guards will not do anything. The guards are literally terrified to go into the the estate. The guards won't do anything, and that's what's the problem. So. Like and so, you, so an incident like this, the guards are at fault for not being brave enough to go in and sort it out. They ha- they, they're going to have to. If There's people that have been run from their homes. There's families like my children that are homeless now that ha- I've nowhere to cook for. Because of, these, because of these, these kids that are still running the place. Like a year on, they're still running the place. Mm. I, the guards could have this sorted. They, like the place is gated off. There's some, the most, you can come across the nicest, nicest people in the world, and I've said this, sort of the are people in that estate. There is lovely people in the estate. Seeing this, I couldn't credit it enough. It, everyone looks out for each other. It's only a small minority of people, and the guards are just not sorting it out. 
the guard aren't, they're not willing to even drive into the estate. And, uh, sorry, was it that small minority of people who ran you out of the area? I couldn't say because I wasn't, I wasn't home at the time, you know what I mean? No, but you, sorry, you said you were, you were living there and you were run out. <sighs> Hello. Hello. Adrian, she's yeah. very upset because she's still on the streets, though. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's not fair on a year down the line, and she's still walking the streets with five kids. And do you where, know what I mean? Uh, and where is she living now? Uh, here, there, and everywhere. Hotels, hostels, like you know, it's not fair. Like she used to drag the kids' bags, um, cases, everything, you name it. She used to be out of there the next morning before ten. Like, it's not fair on a. Do you know what I mean? You see, what, I, what I'm hearing is, I mean, you're, you're talking about her, um, uh, 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 listening to her, and she just handed the phone back to you. She doesn't want to speak. She's terrified. Well, exactly, exactly. Because when she was talking to you last year on the radio, she was literally hounded on Facebook. The meshes were rolling in. You do this again. We're going to get you here. We're going to do this. She's pulled in the street and all she is. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's unbelievable. Don't believe it. Like, she's already made to kneel on. Do you know what I mean? It's just not fair. I have five kids myself, though. And she's walking the streets with her whole kids. She should have put them into school now. And she's still walking around the streets. You know? That's unbelievable. You see, I'm just, I'm, I'm curious to know why a neighbourhood would just gang up on an individual like that. that As be- she said herself, it was over our ex-partner. Now, he's locked up now at the moment, but it was still going on. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's over our ex partner. It's nothing got to do with her. It's over our ex, for what he done and what he didn't do. Do you know what I mean? And um, wh- what happened to her house? Well, there's somebody actually in our house now at the moment. But the, she was literally, everything was smashed up. As you've seen yourself in photographs yourself last year. So due, 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 to, due to the behaviour... Of um, her ex, yeah. her ex then uh, some local people decided they were getting her out, and that was it. Yeah, yeah, we don't want her because she's part of him. So the way they were kind of seeing it is she's going to take up what he left off, where he left off. Do you know what I mean? Now, how would you do that with five children? Do you know what I mean? But like I said, it sounds to me because she doesn't want to speak about it, and because of the amount of uh, crap that she got the last time she was on with us. Uh, that she is genuinely terrified of these people. Yeah, she is. She is. She is. That certainly Something doesn't. Stage, yeah. That certainly doesn't paint a good image of a place like Berryfield, does it? <laughs> you, you haven't lived there. You haven't lived there, Adrian. I'm telling you now, it's unbelievable the way the place is. I wouldn't even walk through the estate myself. I wouldn't. I was even afraid myself to go down a visitor. I had to go down right round the other way. I said no. The shoes and all hanging out there, the wires and all, wires pulled down, back doors pulled off. No, there's not, like there was a little kid there last night standing at that gate, and she was an inch away from that car that they're ramming into the gate. And the, yeah, the chap came out to get the house, and he says to her, move away, just move over to the side. That child is about four or five. Oh my God, I, oh, my blood was boiling. I just said, oh my God, unbelievable, it really is now. It's not a nice way to live. No, I'm bloody it sure it is. It's not a nice way to live. There's no way. So All right, let me, I, have to, I have to take another very quick break, but stay there for a second. The neighbour says this message should have got together and dragged them out of those cars and teach them a lesson. It takes a community to raise a child. Back in the day, locals wouldn't have put up with this. That's an email from a lady called Tanya. Tanya, I don't know how you can say that. How in God's name? I don't, you mustn't have seen the video, Tanya, because... Not in a million years would you get out on the street in the mid, in, in front of those cars and try and stop them. Not in a million years. They were driving that dangerously. Uh, you'd be a lunatic to uh, go out on the street. Listen, I have to take a very quick break. We've a lot more calls to get through. I'd love to hear from you on this. On 67979981, you can text or WhatsApp us 0877989898. We're talking about that joyriding incident over the weekend in Finglas. A lot of people saying the Garda are at fault. They aren't uh, dealing with, they're afraid basically to go into areas like Berryfield. Others saying, no, this is actually down to the, uh, the, the, the locals. They're the ones who need to stop this. Dana, you used to live in uh, Finglas. Yes. And what did you want to say on this? I used to live in Valley Park in Finglas. It's not kind of too bad now, but 
back 12 years ago when we were moving out, there was people being shot down in the field. Our next door neighbour was a drug dealer. We had people being stabbed outside of our house. Like, there were people walking around with samurai swords and all sorts of stuff, and they were robbing cars left, right and centre. Like, it was just, it basically was a shithole, basically. Is that why you left? Yeah. My mum and dad moved us out. Like, my bro- me and my brother, I was 10, my brother was just going eight, and my mum and dad were kind of, were just sick of all the trouble that was going on, and they said, right, we need to get out of this now. Like, my mother and father are from Finglas. Like, they, they were born and raised in Finglas. <clears throat> yes, I, 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 you wouldn't be the first person I know of other people who moved out of Finglas because they didn't want to uh, raise their children there and whatever and moved to, you know, different parts of the country to get away. How far did you move? Uh, we moved to Cavan. You moved to Cavan? Yeah. All right. And is it a better life in Cavan? It was, and then... Uh, all everybody kind of started moving out of Dublin and where I live it's basically kind of turned into a mini Dublin there's there's drugs there's mad crime it's it's kind of it's basically it's turned into a mini Dublin So Dublin followed you to Cavan Are you there? Yep yeah, sorry, oh, sorry. D- Dublin followed you to Cavan Yeah basically um, But it can't it, it can't be as bad is it? I wouldn't say it's as bad, but it's it's getting there now at this stage. All right, stay there for a second, uh, Dana. Six seven nine seven ninety eight one is our telephone number. Jacintha, you're on ninety eight FM. Hi, Jacintha. Oh, sorry, we were talking to Jacintha. Sorry, it's Anya. I wanted to go to um, Anya. You're originally from uh, Wexford. I am, yeah. And you moved uh, in the opposite direction. You moved from Wexford to Finglas. I did, yeah. I settled in Finglas after finishing college and getting a job in Dublin. And what um, you, you wanted to basically say you, you've never had any problems in the area? Um, no, like everywhere, obviously there's antisocial behaviour when there's no amenities around the communities. Like, I come from a small town in Wexford and I see exactly the same behaviour. Um, what, would you, see, would, you, would you see joyriding? Um, the odd time you would, yeah, definitely. And um, I think, like, kids just think they're untouchable everywhere these days like they're not reprimanded there's no consequences for their actions so it's just a culture that's warm and i think in every county in ireland so and when you say no consequences do you mean from the law or do you mean from their parents yes. or what i suppose everywhere parents schools and um, the law like it's just like i said it's just a culture that seems to be forming now and um, just a lot of disrespect towards people in general and it just developed into these behaviours because they think they're untouchable. Like, I have to say, especially now, like, after having the baby, like, my daughter, like, she is a Finglas resident now, and mm. I'd hate to think that she'd, you know, ha- be attributed to being a scumbag or something just because she's from the area, like... And do you she, feel... Uh, what, what, what part of Finglas are you, are you living in? Well, in fairness, I'm living kind of in a more newly developed area around Leakstown, which is between Charlestown oh, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. and That's... Ikea. But, like, you're still on the outskirts of troubled areas. But it's, there, it's, but it's, a great community it's a long area. distance from Finglas West now. Well, not t- technically, though, either. Like, you know, you're only literally over the other side of the wall, really. Like, you know. Mm. Um, but I just, I just think Finglas gets a hard rap. There's a lot of good people in Finglas. I work as a nurse and... Um, close by and I'd, I'd formed great relationships with families from Finglas and um, what you see is what you get um, I don't think it's fair that they get such a hard rap I, the, the girls at work slag me for choosing to live in Finglas but uh, I, because I, it has I, that I, sort of reputation it does that people it would does. wonder why would you ever choose to live there yeah they would and to be honest as well if I can say, before I came to Dublin to college, I'd never been to Dublin before, and I always had a bad reputation down the country because all you ever hear is the bad things that happen in Dublin. You don't get to hear about the good things that happen, so um, I don't know. That's just my opinion on it anyway, but from my experience, um, there's nothing but a lot of good people in Finglas, and 
like everywhere, like down home in Wexford, there's just a pocket of people. Crime is spreading down the country. You know, with access to the M50 now and stuff, there's just, it's farming everywhere. So I don't think it's fair just to stick it on Finglas the whole time. All right. And like I said, the part of Finglas that you live in, uh, a lot of people wouldn't even call Finglas um, because it's so, uh, it's, I mean, it's a good two miles away from Finglas West. So, you know, you're, yeah, but you'd still be driving through it, like to go to to go to work and stuff. And there's still people going around on dirt bikes and stuff, like and, you know, on the main roads and stuff here. So you would see antisocial behaviour spreading up in the direction. I mm. mean, it's not far off. It's, but um, yeah, I just don't think it deserves the rep- the reputation that it gets. And one last call. That's you, Stephen. You're on ninety eight FM. How are you? Good evening, yourself. Not bad, thanks, Stephen. You live ten minutes from there, um, uh, Stephen. And what did you want to uh, say? The same area that girl from up around me, town, uh, uh, been. Right. Uh, and I lived in Cabra before that, so I know Berryfield fairly well. That place has been like that since day one, Adrian. Since day one, that place has had problems. Uh, the fifty fifty were from that area. Taxis won't go into it. Buses won't go into it. Delivery drivers won't go into it. Guards won't go into it. People with brains want to go into it. So it's always been like that. This is not new down there. That may be the case, but how do you stop that? Is it, is it because the guards are are too afraid? Can you, you know, who's at fault? Is it the locals for not reporting on them? Who would they you blame? They need to get together and snap it over. But it's, uh, the government as well needs to bring in some measures to stop guards being afraid to tackle youths. They're afraid to go near them now. Like they, they know that they can't charge them. They can't do nothing to them. So what's the point? Yeah, I suppose so. Um, and a message just came in a second ago and it says, the Gardaí are at fault, but you can't blame them. They are working for a week's wages. The riot squad should have been called out to that incident. Um, uh, Oh, sorry, yeah, the the riot squad should have been uh, called out to uh, back the Gardaí. Even ambulances are stoned and staff assaulted. Uh, you see uh, the Gardaí, the Garda transit vans with steel uh, screens over their windows. And another message says, um, could you ask Adrian to say that the Gardaí should arrest the people video recording the cars? And if they don't tell who's in the cars, they should arrest uh, the people who uh, recorded the video and charge them for withholding information. So if you don't rat, you get arrested. You see, that's basically how it will be seen uh, for any of the residents uh, if they were to uh, ring the guards and give information. Um, I'm living on Berryfield Drive all my life and I can tell you not one of those cars were from the road itself and the Gardaí are far from afraid to come onto the road. Ridiculous talk going on about the road. Uh, We can't stop what other people do. All right. Thank you very much indeed for all of your calls, comments, texts and opinions. This is 98FM's Dublin Talks. 98FM. The sound of the city. 98FM's Dublin Talks. Weekdays from 10am. With Adrian Kennedy.